This is a TV Kojiko Sports Presentation. Commonwealth Field in Brockville, home of the BCI Red Rams. This is the ASA AA Senior Football. And this afternoon, it is the BCI Red Rams hosting the Iron Pryor Redmen. Neil McHugh and Robert Palmer, glad to bring you this one. We're already in progress as the Redmen were kicking away to the BCI Red Rams, but regained the short kick. And now have a first down, I believe, uh, Robert, or is no, it third? Uh, it is, in fact, third down and long for the Red Men. So it's the Red Men on our left in the red pants and the Red Rams on our right in the black pants and the whites. So the initial drive of the football game, and again, the Red Men regained the short kick. So back to kick. And again, that's with the wind at their back. That's deep into now at the 5, 10, 15. And a decent run back there by number 31 for the Red Rams. Matt Petham. One of the big losses today, no Mitch Wilson in the backfield for the Red Rams. So Dylan Bell and the Rams take their first possession of this young football game. And what an Iasa double A junior tilt that we witnessed as St. Mary's Crusaders continue their drive for successive provincial titles. Their backs were against the wall down 9 8 late and came back to beat the LaSalle Black Knights by a score of 16 to 9. That was just a plain thriller here at Commonwealth. Back to throw is Bell. That hangs it up and it's picked off and it looks like a pick six. Touchdown, Redmond. That ball just kind Ooh, of hung up a bit there, on Bell yes. on the win, in the wind. Picked off by number 40, Sean Day. And the cornerback takes it in the house. So the first tur turnover of the football game is a pick six. And the Aaron Pryor Redmond, the defending champs, have taken an early 6 nothing lead. Yeah, Robert, I mean, we're throwing cross field into that. Basically, it's like a southwest breeze. And on for the extra point. The kick is up by Josh Woods, and it is good. And the Iron Pryor Redmen wow. have taken an early 7 to nothing lead over the BCI Red Rams, and you're watching this Viasa double A playoff game on TV Kojiko, truly local television. Well, that's quite the start now. You get to uh, cover the onside kick and uh, the short kick and then, uh, you know, create a basically, uh, you know, a pick you six. Stop them and uh, so the defending champs uh, on the road are off to uh, couldn't probably wish a better start here early. Oh, that's, uh, for those that are in the refrigerator, it's a uh, quick seven points. Seven nothing. Iron Pryor Redmond back to receive this kick. And it's cornered over and picked up by Tyler King. He loses a little bit of footage, but moves the ball ahead. And the Red Rams are going to have good field position at about their own 44-yard line, trailing this one by a score of 7 to nothing. Now Pete Atkinson uh, today said the Rams certainly were going to miss Wilson in the backfield today, but uh, definitely going to try and mix things up here. There's Burns in the shotgun. Sheridan right beside him. 
in motion. All left side, the handoff is to Adam Sheridan. Sheridan moving ahead, picks up a couple. So the BCI Red Rams, they are here today based on a 6-2 victory against Holy Trinity of Cornwall last week in uh, very, very windy conditions and uh, wind is an issue. It's been sunny and dry. The weather's been very cooperative, but uh, it's been the wind the last two Saturdays and that played a big, played a big uh, part in that football game. Red Rams scoring a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Bell back to pass throws and it's off the fingertips intended for number 20, Cam Pila for the BCI Red Rams. So it's a three and out for the Rams. They will be kicking away to the Redmen. That was a pretty good throw actually, Neil. It was over here on our side and uh, sort of had a one arm it, but uh, no, he might have been on a, you know, another time and able to pull that one in. He had his fingertips on it, trying to bring it down, but it goes incomplete. And the kick is away, and that's a pretty good one considering it's into the wind. It takes a bounce, picks up, flags on the play. This will be no yards, and coming number 33 for the Redmen Good returning return. up there. Jager Pratt, running back slash slot buck for the Redmen. So on comes Nathan Andrews and the Redmond. But it's a pick six by number 40, Sean Day. The cornerback that has given the Redmond an early seven to nothing lead here again. The wind swirling. But Redmond uh, up seven, start in good field position. At their own 44 yard line. And off up the middle. And a very small gain there. Good stop by the, uh, by Ryan the Red Curtis. Rams. Nice fake on the inside for. Uh, so Ryan Cargus gains a couple, but uh, as you mentioned, Robert, a uh, good play there by the Rams. It forces the Redmond into a second and eight, leading at seven to nothing. Number 23 at the helm for the Redmond, Nathan Andrews. Andrews back to pass. He's looking long. He's going down. He's got it in. And he was open, but off the fingertips intended for the wide receiver, Brandon that was a great throw. Trillot. But a good throw by Nathan Andrews, kind of stretching out the Red Ram defense. So the Red Ram defense does make a stand and forces the Redmond into a three and out. Oh, I like that throw. No, well, it was there. Just, uh, and, and maybe the wind played a part in that. Might just have, blowing uh, a little can't tell, bit. But, uh, hard to say. Pedham and Benson are back to receive for the Red Rams. It's a high snap. And he gets away a decent kick. It's going to be Benson. Benson now looking right, Whoop. going the wrong way. And down he goes. Number 82 in there, Andrew Lesk. And especially teams for the Redmen. So the Red Rams. We'll start from around their 30 yard lines. And of course the last possession accounted for our scoring as a pick six and taking it in the house was Sean Day off that Dylan Bell Crossfield pass that hung up just a little bit. The day takes it in. So it's first down, Red Rams. Now, pulling out on the option is Bell. And Bell, very little there. Contained by number 36, Mitch Bott. And number 89, Liam Schreider for the Redmen. Five 
5.53 to go in the opening quarter of this Yasa double-A playoff, senior double-A playoff match. And thus far, it's 7-0 for the Iron Fryer Redmen over the BCI Red Rams. Second in about nine for Bell and the Rams. Load up the right side. Bell now looks left. It'll dish off, and it's complete to Petham. Now Petham running down the sidelines, and Petham's still going. But Petham may have enough for a Red Ram first down. And yeah, he, he does. does. So a nice little... That's a nice play. Little swing pass there from Bell. A very safe play, I believe. Uh, yeah. Atkinson and company were looking at a, a number of those kind of a safe, uh, high percentage, you know, little dump, little short, little pot aerial uh, assault here today. So their first first down of the, of the football game for the Rams, Bell and company, Peelet King out to the left here. Little play action, it's a keeper by Bell. Bell moving ahead and Bell picks up two or three. A cook of foot, Dylan Bell. And Bell picks up four. He's going to bring up second and six Red Rams. Going to have to get the ball to their own 49-yard line to move the sticks. Looking for a successive first downs for the first time this afternoon. Benson right, King left. Little bubble screen, and it was intended for number 24, Bell going to Todd Fawcett. It goes incomplete, and the Rams are going to have to kick into this wind. Back for the Red Rams. Number 21 to receive, Andrew McCauley, and number 33, Jager Pratt. High snap. And the kick is way, and it's not a particularly good one. And it goes out of bounds right at the Redmond 50-yard line, so they're in good shape again. Four thirty-five to go in the opening quarter. No, no, and congratulations to Steve White and the St. Mary's Crusaders. They continue on a thrilling come from behind 16 to 9 victory over the LaSalle Black Knights of Kingston in the waning seconds of that IASA double A junior tilt. And congratulations to Rick Miles, Peter Yurden, and the Thousand Islands Pirates. Uh, they did uh, on a great season. They, they do come up short, falling 6 nothing to the Frontenac Falcons. It was earlier this week at Thousand Islands, a very defensive, very defensive match. Two field goals were all the offense that the Frontenac Falcons needed to win that football game. They are hosting the St. Pete's of Ottawa in that Yasha AAA match today at George Richardson Stadium in Kingston. First down, back to pass, another little bubble screen set up and complete to number 22, Brandon Furlot, taking the pass from Andrews. And he picks up about five. It'll bring up second and... Uh, We'll see a long five for the Red Men as the ball is just inside Red Ram territory. The Red Men and the Red Rams here this afternoon at Commonwealth. And the Red Men are the defending champs in a very solid, successful football program in Armpire. Andrews. Handoff is to oh, Prot. Great job great there. 47. Wow. Peyton Helmuth. Right there, almost took the handoff. <laughs> great job by Helmuth. Helmuth, that, another one of the Rams that's hurting today, but comes up with a huge play there. Even a loss, I believe, on the play. 
So the Red Ram defense is uh, doing its job early in this match. And Petum and Benson will be back. To receive this kick from Pratt. Benson loses a handle, now picks it up, and down he goes. So the Rams start uh, Robert in a hole. Trailing this one seven to nothing. With three minutes to go in the opening quarter. We're watching this double A senior match on TV Kojiko, truly local television. And prior district high school Redmond, seven to BCI, Red Rams, no score. So it's a little wildcat to Benson. Benson trying to get around the left side, but down he goes, hauled down by number 36, Mitch Bott for the Redmen. It's like a straight keeper on that one. No gain, Neil. So Rams uh, is not so manageable. He end up with a second and long. The trials and tribulations of three down Canadian football. Pat him in the backfield. Bell back to pass looking right. Now steps up now running right and down he goes. I don't believe it's a sack but it might just might well be for the Redmen and the BCI Rams are gonna have to kick this one away into the wind and the Redmen are gonna have excellent field position. With a minute and a half to go in the opening quarter leading this one seven to nothing. Again, it's Pratt and McCauley back to receive. The kick from Number 52, Justin Boyce. You can ill afford to do what he did in the last one. No, needs a little bit of better kick this time. And the Redman Robert, uh, they have been just basically chewing up, annihilating everybody along their way, but this is a big, big successful football program and they are in the thick of things year after year. Boyce gets a good oh, yes. punt away under the circumstances and that is Pratt at the 45. Got blockers out 40, front. 35, 30, 25, we're out, 20. We're out, big we're out, we're out. And down into the end zone for the touchdown. What a run. By number 33, Jagger Pratt, and it's now 13 to nothing for the Redmen. Great job of running, Robert. Uh, it was set up blocking to the right, and all of a sudden he's seen a crease, uh, took it left, and really nobody there. So. Uh, a good return a job, good job set up by the Redmen. The kick is up and the kick is good. So it is 14 to nothing Redmen early here. 110 to go in the opening quarter and the Redmen on the road, a great start. Well, that was a good kick into the wind. And, um but we could see from our vantage point the number of blockers he had out front, and he had the he has the legs on him, and um, all you saw was uh, those black jerseys. And no, they had it set up well right, and he took it left, and uh, you could see it. What a seam he had to go, and Pratt takes it in. So a pick six from Day, and then Pratt returns that punt. For another Redmond score, it's 14 to nothing. The Rams are gonna have to move the ball, Robert, or uh, this could be a long day for the BCI Red Rams. Kick 
is away, and it's Petum. Petum gets away from one, gets away from a couple. Uh, so the BCI Red Rams trailing by 14. Are going to start from just over their own 30-yard line. Backfield, King uh, spread out right, spread things out. Feel motion. The Bill was looking left all the way, now running for his life on the right side, still looking downfield, tosses it, and it goes incomplete. There is, a, however, a flag on the play. Uh, he was getting close to the line of scrimmage, but I don't think he crossed it, Robert. I mean, hard to say from here. And a big break for the Red Rams because it's offside on the Redmen. It seemed to be the look there, Robert, was the, the bell was going to go to number 24 for the Rams, Todd Fawcett, but then uh, checked it down and went right. His wife out there. Right. <laughs> He certainly is fleet of foot, but uh, and you want to be. And you want, and don't make any mistake at all. You want to be back there when you're in pursuit. We're being pursued. It is first down and five for the Rams on that offside Redmond penalty. Bell drops back to pass. Now in trouble again. Now Bell, look out. Bell still on his feet, still on his feet, but it ends up being a huge loss, uh, sometimes you're better just to throw that one away. Great coverage, this is why you can't throw. I was watching the receivers down there. The initial and look was covered. You anyway. just couldn't, there's no way you're gonna find anybody. He's on the run and. And this uh, appears to be the final play of the opening quarter. Second and about 30 for the Rams. Bell rolling out, nice fake. Now he's going to go down the middle, and he that has a man. Man. He has a Benson, complete for Benson. Benson. Oh, what a play! And wow. Give Bell all the credit in the world for selling that on the play action, and that Where allowed. Allowed Benson Design to get play. separation. Great call, Neil. Great call. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it enabled Benson to get separation. Benson, and it ended up being a perfectly thrown pass. Uh, now we get a swirling breeze. Uh, you know, I think the wind moments, died down when he threw that down. ball. Just, I can feel it. Just, <laughs> just, just in time. And that was the final play of the opening quarter. End of the wind. <laughs> and uh, after one quarter here in this, the Asa Double A Senior Playoff, it is the visiting Iron Pryor Redman 14 and the BCI Red Rams no score. However, the Red Rams are moving the ball and are inside the Redman 35 yard line. So one defensive score and one kickoff return. Prott returns a punt for the touchdown and Sean Day a pick six as accounted for the Redman scoring. Here's Bell looking right all the way, throwing it and it's incomplete. Benson well covered there by number 41, Jordan Callow. And number 40, he's kind of thrown into double, double, double coverage, coverage there. I Sean, think that was, Sean Day, they might have been very fortunate there. I think he was fortunate, that was high. The, uh, you know, Robert, finally the Red Ram offense, something to build on a long one. Like it was second and 30, and that combination of Bell to Benson picked, about, picked up about 45 to 50 yards. Field position they have got back, but they are in the second and 10. Back to pass. 
The initial look not there. Good coverage again. In trouble is Bell. Now throws over the middle. And it's laying out there. It goes incomplete. Intended for Jason Irwin. But uh, Bell uh, under a lot of pressure. Uh, decent composure. You know, throwing it there. Getting back in the middle and throwing it for Irwin. Unfortunately for the Red Rams, it goes incomplete and brings up third down. It appears the Rams are taking a timeout on third down. A little different from the junior game when they're a little reluctant to throw the ball at all. And um, of course, these are seniors, and Benson, uh, or not Benson, but Dylan Bell has quite an arm on him. And They're talking over whether they're going to be a third down gamble, and it appears they're gambling all the way. Well, initially, anyhow. Not too bad when that wind dies down. You no, almost feel human. No, it's a, really an exceptional day for the 19th of November without the wind. That was the forecast, and it is true to form, a high of nine, but a, uh, a pretty uh, significant breeze. So Boyce is going to, they're not gambling, Boyce is going to kick this one into the end zone. He gets the kick. It's a nice high one. Takes a red ram bounce. Picked up. They've got some room if they can get around the right side. There's a block, and getting it out of the end He's zone. Out. And a good job there by number 21 for the Redman, Dylan Peary. But he picked up a huge block that allowed him to get outside and get it out of the end zone. But the Redmen start deep in their own territory. At about their own 18 yard line and they lead this one early in the second quarter, 14 to nothing. Day with a pick six on defense. And Pratt returning a, boy, a good boy's punt for the other score. So Nathan Andrews, the handoff. And up the middle goes Ryan Cargus, the tailback. And he picks up about, well, maybe five and a half for the Redmond. Barrett on the tackle for PCI. Yeah, that was quite a run from, uh, from deep in the end There's no such thing as that. <laughs> this high school football. Um, you know, he ran a long way laterally you know, from, uh, from uh, right to left and then got the big block. That was the play yes. and why he got it out of the end zone. So Nathan Andrews into a second and about five, five and a half. Andrews is looking right all the way, setting it up to Pratt. Do they have it set up? And a good job by the BCI defense. And the Redmen are forced into a third down into a punting situation. So a little field position victory right now at the moment for the Red Rams. Officials time out. Nine forty two to go in the half. Fourteen to nothing. For the Arm Proud District High School Redmen, the defending champions of a perennial double A superpower. Here's Pratt, his kick is away. Now be picked up by Dylan Bell, looking left, and Bell, nice Bell. Bell almost broke that, Robert. He takes yep. it inside the Redmond 40, but uh, he picked up another 15, well, we have 15 yards on that little maneuver. The elusive Dylan Bell. 
And I know the old uh, the old timers will all say, well, we went both ways as well, but uh, it wasn't too often that their quarterbacks fielded punt returns. Not since Jackie Parker. There are exceptions. So the ball is inside the Redmen 35 yard line. That's where Bell and company set up. Sheridan in the backfield. Handoff is to Sheridan. Going to go off right tackle. And uh, fighting away. Whatever he can get there is a bonus. It's not a lot. And down on the play for the Rams is number 40, Jason Irwin. Neil McHugh and Robert Palmer and the old TV Kojiko crew. Definitely pleased to be bringing you this double A playoff action. And Robert, uh, again, a great uh, football coverage here by TV Kojiko. And this is, in fact, <coughs> the last football game of 2011, win or lose. Yeah, it's been a, just a Grandiose experience to be uh, the number of games we've had this year and everything and the, and the new Kojigo uh, heated booth we have here. Yes, yes, well, it's, it's ventilated fairly well today. But uh, weather conditions and, uh, and it, it, on the AAA side of things, this is the, the alternate years where the Pirates uh, either have foam field or they don't. And we were fortunate we caught two Iasa AAA playoff games. Of course, Tiss defeating St. Joseph's of Cornwall 27 to 14, and then uh, succumbing 6 0 in a defensive struggle against the Frontenac Falcons of Kingston, who are at home today hosting St. Pete's. Bell back to pass, looking right all the way. Now in trouble, throws one up in the air. Oh. And very fortunate that wasn't picked up. That ball, there's all sorts of coverage there, and Redmond sweaters around. Going to bring up another third down for the Red Rams. But uh, no, in all this uh, extra coverage this year, um, again, like uh, say with the AAA, this next year will not have home field, so we'll miss those covering those games. You know, other than a couple uh, windy uh, last broadcast from here, here at Commonwealth and uh, a definite breeze here today, but other than that, Dry and sunny conditions. Weather has been very cooperative. Here is Bell on third down and shotgun. He's got some heat coming on his back. Bell's now going to tuck it in and out of bounds. Well shy of the first down. He was going to have to get it to it was about his own 24 yard line. So they'll turn it over on downs and the Redmond. Good coverage again, Neil. Yeah, their defense, the Bell's initial looks, Robert, they're, they're just not there. They're, no, they're covered. No. So the Redmen up 14 to nothing. We'll start from, it appears to be. Twenty-five, twenty-six. We'll say about the Redmen 26 yard line, 730 and counting. And off and trying to go around right side, stringing it out. And the BCI Rams hold. Ball was handed off to Mike Ryan, his first carry of the day. The handoff from quarterback number 23, Nathan Andrews of the Redmond. Short game. Long run, short game. So it's going to bring up second in uh, a long eight for the Redmen. A pick six by Sean Day and Jagger Pratt returning a punt have accounted for the Redmen scoring. Fake Day now it's, it's a keeper and fleet of foot, but uh, he may have enough for the first down, Andrews, and he can scamper as well, evident, but no, it appears He's probably a good yard and a half to two shy of the first down. 
So Andrews just sort of kept it, and uh, he can motor as well, Robert. Ev evidence yes. right there. We have a timeout. It appears to the Red Rams. And at the moment, the Redmen uh, kind of surprised, but maybe with the success they have that they would be going, Robert, up 14 points. But second and a go, maybe close to two, third and two. <coughs> Six oh three remains here in the first half. And the Redmen are going for it. So the BCI defense uh, could be an important part in this football game. The Rams trail it. The Redmen by 14. Appears to be Prod over the huddle. Prod is probably going to go straight forward. No, he gives it to the quarterback. And did the Rams come up with a big play? Oh, so, it's going to be close. It appears they've done it. They held him. Well, Good penetration on the left side. You'd wonder about the Redmond, you know, up 14, Robert. Uh, well in control here. Why would you do that? I mean, now. This isn't fair to be talking about this after the fact. But uh, the, Red, the Red Rams are an excellent field position at about the Redmond 35 yard line, trailing by 14, 551, 550 to go in the opening half. A little Razzle Dazzle is the running back, Prot, over center, and he hands off to. The quarterback, Andrews, and the Rams snuff it out. Bell, a handoff to Sheridan. Sheridan trying to find room on the right side. Sheridan moving ahead and picks up. Well, initially it looks, looks like, like a good game. Now. Yeah, it's, it's a good game. Is, in fact, Robert, about six. Bell, nice run to Sheridan. Again, congratulations to St. Steve White and the St. Mary's Crusaders. 16 to nine victory. Uh, looked like uh, things were not looking very promising. It was a, a late touchdown by White. And the uh, Crusaders pulling out of the hat and keep that undefeated string of provincial title intact. Here's the pitch, flags on the play. It's Benson trying to get around the right side. And now we get another flag. Benson corralled there by Sean Day. Looks like 70 the end was offside to me. And it's a procedure penalty against the Red Rams. Come on, gentlemen, hey! Hey, Matty Pete! Hang it, it doesn't do nothing for you. Come on So Robert, your, your Tie Cats, what a huge Ooh. and great football game. Knocking Ooh, off the, was... <laughs> uh, a little battered Alouette team, but nonetheless, oh, they were the, battered, the, but... Best, the best football game in North America last Sunday in overtime, 52-44, Tie Cats. Record points. <laughs> and in uh, record points in, uh, in Winnipeg, they're in tough there against the Blue Bombers in the East Final. Here's the Lions and Eskimos in the West. Here's Bell, back to pass, second down. Bell's going to the house. He hangs it, Somebody. however, and getting a handle on it, but well covered. With Zach Benson, it appears. Looks like he threw it up for a jump ball. He didn't have much uh, Yeah, it, 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 it really hung. It was more lofty than on the line, and uh, it could have just as well been picked. In fact, maybe uh, Benson played a little defense there. 
Make sure that ball wasn't picked. So it's gonna bring up third and long, third and 10 for the Rams. 422 and counting in the opening half. Aaron Pryor Redmond, 14 to BCI Red Rams, no score. You're watching this on TV Kojiko, truly local television here from Commonwealth. Third down gamble, third and a good eight for Bell. Bell back the path, Bell rolling out to his right. Everything's covered again. Bell's getting around the corner, Bell. A good gain by Bell. He's gonna be close to the first down. He just hopped over somebody to his left there. Yeah, this is, uh, does this come down to a measurement or how close? Hey, again, very, very difficult to distinguish. They're calling in the measurement. Second effort by Bell. He, uh, you can see the replay again there, and Bell, uh, great job. Again, initial coverage uh, was there. Tucked it down, ran to the sidelines, and uh, picks up some extra yards, but is he going to come up shy? They're taking a wild here. And now the sticks are coming out. So a big measurement right here in the first half. to just see here momentarily did Bell pick it up stick is stretched out first down. he did pick up the first down on that give long that third down Bell. gamble got to give Bell tremendous credit there his extra effort and athleticism gets a big first down for the Red Rams and their drive continues with under four minutes to go in the half trailing by 14. Good start on the road for the Redmen. No offensive touchdowns. Specialty team kickoff return and a defensive pick six. First down from the Redmen 25 for Bell and the Red Rams. And off, going off left tackle is Sheridan, and he's bundled up quickly there by number 82 and number 92, Andrew Lesk and Scott Forster for the Iron Pryor Redmond. pass it looks like he was thinking the play was designed left I believe all the way now Bell's gonna throw and it's off the hands intended for Pila he was down about the nine yard line but the initial play looked to be a little swing toss left side but there was some penetration from the right side of the Redmond defensive line that kind of negated that Bell then had to kind of go play action to his right and Pila that pass, uh, Pila had to come back for it. He it looked came like back. it was that a little was a smart move. Yes, yes, he came back for it. But if it was on the money, it was it was there. It was just a. But again, pressure forced Bell into yep. kind of rolling yep. out on the run. He's been under pressure for the most part here in the first half. Pretty solid defense here by the Yarn Prior District High School Redmond. So it brings up another third down gamble and another third down long gamble. Third and about eight, now flags fly. This looks like procedure against the Red Rams, so it's gonna make it that much longer. Tack on five more, it's gonna bring up third and 13 for the Red Rams. 2.35 to go in the opening half. Yes, the last football coverage of the year for TV Kojiko, and it has been the best ever, or best in years anyhow, as far as the number of games and uh, conditions. 
and both the Red Rams and the Pirates having some early success in the respective AAA and AA playoffs. Pirates coming up shy earlier this week to Frontenac. Rams in tough here against the defending champs and perennial superpower. The Empire Redmen. So now it's going to be a short kick, and boy, it is a short when it goes off Zach Benson, and it might have jammed his fingers a bit there. Benson now. Now, was it his fingers or was the lower body injury? Uh, I believe it's his hands. But uh, that was a weird play. <laughs> it was a very, very strange play. I don't think you'll find that in the book. I don't know how that all worked out. It's almost like Benson was going to be the receiver. I think what happened is the ball hit Benson in the in the fingers. Yeah. But it almost looked like a, a five-yard punt <laughs> to Benson. But they turn it over on down, so it's Redmond with a first down. 2.22 and counting in the first half, and they're leading it 14 to nothing. Here's Andrews, the keeper. He's got lots of room. Andrews, he breaks containment. He's got a corner. Now he cuts it into the middle. And the quarterback, Andrews, that we've seen as quick a foot, and takes the ball inside Red Ram territory. Nice run right in front of us for a change. Yeah, the quarterback and team captain, Nathan Andrews. So an extra dimension and a, an extra pain and trouble for the BCI defense to contend with is the running dimension and ability of one Nathan Andrews of the Redmen. First down, Redmond from their own 49-yard line. Now under two minutes. Andrews, little handoff there to number six, Chris Benoit, and Benoit picks up about six, six by six. So second and manageable for the Redmond. Pick six by Sean Day. And Jager Pratt's kickoff return. The cannon for the Redmonds, 14 to nothing lead. Here on a sunny, dry, but windy afternoon from Commonwealth. Andrews in the shotgun. Little bubble screen completed to 22. Blockers in front of him. Tyler King. And Clayton Helmuth in on the tackle but it is enough for another Redmond first down. And they appear to be taking a timeout. Come here, come here, all of you, come here. Huddle up right here, huddle up right here. Come on, come on. You're gonna throw to 22 every time. I need you to attack that young man and stay on his face, okay? Don't try to get, trust the rest of us. We're gonna come and play with you. You just gotta stand him up. Gentlemen, I need an effort 19 to go in the half, Redmond on the march. With a big third down stop deep in their own territory. And a couple of first downs that brought the ball into the Red Ram territory at the Red Ram 44. And junior action again, St. Mary's Crusaders moving on. The winning tradition in that Steve White's junior program continues. It was a last, last minute drive that pulled it out 16 to nine for the Crusaders earlier today here on TV Kojiko. First down, Redmond. And a little play action again, but a keeper, and he's got a big hole for Andrews. Lots of daylight on the right side. Andrews needs to block, get around one tackler, but a big tackle by Dylan Bell saves a touchdown, but it's a huge scamper by the quarterback, Nathan Andrews, and the Redmen are in the red zone inside the Red Ram 20-yard line, make it the 18, first down. 1.10 to go in the half. Another great play call. Fake to the back and draw the quarterback up the middle and 
Yeah, that's, and he uh, can scamper. Right? Little sneak. This guy is really. It's a pairing that we didn't see that in the first few uh, plays of this football no. game, but now it's becoming Open apparent that he's it up now. It's there. It's there. And away to the races and. Uh, Picked up about 20, 25 yards there by uh, Nathan Andrews, number 23, the quarterback of the Iron Prior Redmond. So the Red Rams, needless to say, Robert, are going to have to make a stance here, or the Redmond are going to be uh, up 21. It's going to be an awful uphill climb for the BCI Red Rams. But the Rams have bent. But they haven't broken on this uh, sustained drive by the Redmen yet. And of note, the Redmen, uh, they have been putting away their opponents quite handily. And on their way right now, unless things change, there's a lot of motion there. That appears that uh, Andrews, a good hard count, and did he draw? No, now they're, they're pointing as if it's procedure against the Redmond. That was Sheridan that was in the backfield. No, it's, uh, it's offside all the way on the Red Rams. So it'll be a first and five. From about the Red Ram 12 or 13 yard line. Well, the Redmen threatening once again. This one is slowly getting away from the Red Rams. 14 to nothing, and the offense has yet to score, but are seriously threatening. Back to throw Andrews to Pratt. Pratt. Well, breaks a couple tackles, but then lunges forward, gets a couple more. Second and four. Andrews throw, and it's incomplete. Uh, that was jammed up pretty well by uh, King, Pila, Sheridan of the Red Rams. We'll bring up third and five for the Redmen. Will they take the points? That was a strange call, Eric. You got. So Josh Woods is on to attempt the field goal. Down the kick is up and the little kick is good. Well, they come out of that. It was a good uh, long drive. They come out of there with three. Well, a little, uh, you know, a big stance by the Red Rams that uh, if they get seven there, it, it's gotten away from them. They're, they're in big trouble. Uh, three points. It's a, it's a narrow victory. It's now 17 to nothing for the Arm Prior Redmen. And uh, it looks like certainly the Red Rams are going to have to be in a come from behind mode here this afternoon. Under a minute to go, in fact, 45 ticks in the opening half, 17 to nothing, Redman. 17 to nothing, the offense hasn't uh, scored seven yet. Uh, a field goal, a pick six on D, and a kickoff return by Jager Pratt, who took it in the house. That has been the Redman scoring. 17 to nothing with 45 seconds to go in the opening half of this Yasa AA playoff from Commonwealth, Neil McEwen, Robert Palmer, and company bringing this game. Back to receive is Benson and Petham for the Red Rams. Get one more, it's kind of a, an intermediate kick. It's picked up by King. King is 
Taken down in his own 45 yard line by number 82 of the Redmen, Andrew Lesk, who's made a few tackles here today for the Redmen. Redmen on our right in the black tops and red pants and the BCI Red Rams white tops and the black pants to our left. So Bell and company have 42 seconds to try and get something uh, positive before the end of the first half. But it's been all Redmen, probably the, the one Pot is a positive note on third and long. Uh, Bell hitting Benson uh, for the Rams. Hand off off the middle. It's Sheridan. Sheridan met right of there. He got to appear as forward progress would take him to the 50. And that's where it is. So uh, it was about five, five and a half yards on that first down. Second down, Red Rams. 33, 32 seconds in the opening half. In goes Pettum, out comes Sheridan. <clears throat> and uh, the wind just letting us know that it has not left the field yet. Bell in the shotgun, second and five. Pila out to the right. That was a first look. Puts it down. Now Pila's going to try and get down. And Pila kind of hung up a bit short. I think the number four, number 40, Sean Day, the pick six, took it in house. But that is go. the end of the opening half here at Commonwealth. And at the, the end of the first half of this Yasa AA playoff, it is the Iron Pryor Redmond 17. The BCI Red Rams, no score. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. My name is Laura, and uh, that's my house with the solar panels on it. It makes it feel part of a community that people are doing it together, and that it is neat when you're talking to somebody about the solar panels. And because we are feeding into the grid, possibly some of the power that we've uh, produced is going to like your workplace. It's cool to know that kids in the neighborhood are growing up with knowing that solar power is being produced here, and knowing that that's not something that is going to be achieved in the future, but that's already happening now. I am green power. tanning was safe. They said their tanning rays were less likely to cause a sunburn. What you need to know is UV light from indoor tanning can cause premature aging. And even worse, UV light can increase your risk of skin cancer. Including melanoma, the deadliest form of skin cancer. In fact, current estimates are that one in seven Canadians will develop skin cancer. And one person dies from skin cancer about every seven hours. I don't want to be one of them. This message brought to you by the Canadian Dermatology Association. Welcome back to Commonwealth Field for this Yasa Senior AA Playoff match. And uh, the first half in the books, Robert, it's been all the Empire District High School Redmen with a commanding 17 to nothing over the BCI Red Rams. Surprisingly enough, a little combination, everything for the Red Rams here this after, for the Redmen this afternoon. Only three points, a field goal just prior to half, but a pick six on D and uh, by Sean Day. And Jagger Pratt returned a boy's punt into the end zone for to account for the scoring, all of the scoring that is, and it's all of the scoring for the Iron Prior Redmen thus far this afternoon to make matters worse. The Red Rams will be kicking away to the Red Ra to the Red Men. We're starting to have a, an issue with Red Rams and Red Men for the first time today. It's underway and bounces off the fingertips there of Sean Day. Sean Day with a pick six here. Sean Day with some good running room and he'll start the Redmen in good field position around their 30 yard line. 
And you're watching the Siasa AA football game on TV Kojiko, truly local television. Our last broadcast of the year, which been an exceptional football coverage year by TV Kojiko. It's been a pleasure, Neil, to be, uh, to be involved with you and uh, the rest of the crew and you Matt well. and yeah. all the guys and Steve. And, uh, and, uh, it's one big happy family. Oh, dude, the Munsters. <laughs> so it's a handoff up the middle from Nathan Andrews to Jager Pratt. Again, this uh, our Empire football program, uh, as I had forementioned, a perennial double A power. They are the defending champs. And it's going to bring up a second and five for the Redmen, and they have dispensed with everybody fairly easily to date and well on their way with a 17 nothing lead as we start the first possession of the second half and right off the bat Tom Bell and company are calling a time out interesting you just come off uh, I imagine it's something maybe Bell has seen but you're just coming off the halftime and uh, the first possession you're calling a time out so I presume it's something Bell has seen he wants to uh, Correct or make the Red Rams aware of. Well, that is strange. Uh, so needless to say, it needs to be something of utmost importance to use a, a timeout so quickly here in the second half. Of course, the Red Rams can ill afford to uh, give up any more points to the Arm Prior Redmond. And the St. Mary's Crusaders moving on to defend that provincial championship, but it took a harrowing late second drive to knock off the LaSalle Black Knights, 16 to nine, here earlier this afternoon. Handoff, first carry of the afternoon. He's got a ton of running room, and he's got himself a big game. Number 54, John Barron, his first carry of the football game. And he takes it into Red Ram territory to the Red Ram 52-yard line, first down Redmond. First possession of the day, and it's a big game for a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid individual there. Baron number 54. Right, they got a lot of weapons back there. I mean, that's his well, they first. Just, just keep showing. They just keep showing up. A little play action, play action right up the middle, and it's another gain of about five for the Red Ram. And this time, it appears it was number 42. Jeremy Bastian, and that's his first carry of the football game. Like they're going with, today too. Are they going with substitutes already here in the second half? The thing is, they have to watch the, the option on that quarterback because he can run too. Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big trouble, that extra running dimension with the quarterback for the defense. And here it is right again to Barron, and Barron actually trips himself up, but not before. He's picked up another Redmond first down. The drive continues. A little lucky there. He tripped over the chalk line. <laughs> he had field. There we go. Chalk that one up to the uh, the maintenance crew. Maintenance crew. I think they're. Um, Gee, come here. What's going on in line? Why are we swearing? Are you benching Are you benching six? They're home favorites. First down, Redmond from the Red Ram 40 yard line. Good hard count and the pitch to number six, Chris Benoit. Benoit, big hole. He's got a first down and a lot more. However, flags fly. He's down to about the Red Ram 20 yard line, pending 
the flag. It appears to be against the Redmond. Early indications. It's a hold, and that will negate a huge gain of about 20 yards by number six. Chris Benoit for the Iron Fire Redmond. And that will take the take the ball all the way out to the Red Ram 50. It's going to bring up first and 20. Wow, that is another expensive. That is a big you know, one. Even though they're up 17 nothing, it's. Um, Well, the longer the drives, the more yeah. time position there is. I know, is. but they're moving, they're moving. Good chance inside to Barron. Barron bowling his way. Met there by Zach Benson. And number 77, Sean Taylor of the Red Rams. This is a pretty big boy. We watch that again. Baron to stop, and and uh, you know it does require for sizable Baron there. A couple of guys to bring him down. Second and fifteen. Baron picked up five for the Redmond. Everything's in motion, right? It's a keeper by Andrews, and boy, did he dart out of there, but boy, is it shut down just as equ equally quick. But flags fly again, and the Red Rams had stopped them pending the outcome of this flag. Jason Irwin. Dylan Bell, He's and this one. Fast. Piling on. Major penalty. Oh, that hurts. Just when they had the Red they Rams stopped. stopped. They give, uh, they relight the drive. And it'll be first down, Redmond from the BCI 26 yard line. A huge penalty because the drive was stopped. Now it continues. And so does the clock. Redmond leading it early here in the third quarter 17 to nothing. Barron in the backfield. Andrews, hand off to Barron. No, oh, Andrews oh. lost the handle and is forced to cover it up, loses a couple. Yeah, he got his toe caught in the turf. Seven minutes to go here in the third quarter from Commonwealth Field. We're off the double-A playoff. The Empire Redmond in good control, leading 17 to nothing. Hand off, number 19. On the left side, flags fly. That was Ryan Cargus. And a red ram is down. It appears to be number 52. Want to look at that? And kind of caught up in all of that was Justin Boyce, and the importance here is Mr. Boyce is also the Red Ram kicker. And what we've seen here today, you know, one of the significant, we've seen it in the Crusader Black Knight game, we're seeing it again this afternoon, but very, uh, Significant the penalties are, are uh, very significant. Again, this yeah, there's drive a lot is, after a uh, big gain. Of course, you know, as I said, a hold uh, could be the contributing factor to that big gain. And um, but you've got a piling on here, and, uh, and a good. They made a great stop in second down, and you get that. Well, and you know, the other thing, Robert, I think there's probably holding that goes on in every play, but uh, the, the ones that are a little bit more glaring are the ones that sort of draw the attention, obviously. In my day, there was holding on every play. That's what I mean. I mean, it's... Uh, sometimes you wonder if the thought process is in looking for them at particular times. This is a third down. It's kicked away, end over end. 
and it's going to go out of bounds. Down around the 15 yard line, something like that. Something like yeah, that. Hard to see from here. Looks like around the 10. 10. No. No. <laughs> now we're, well, now we're pick another number. Now we're very right. How about? Uh, come on. Okay, we'll go 11. We'll go 10 and a half. I hope he puts that down sooner or later there. It looks like it's going to be first down Red Rams in a big hole. Well, we'll go over the first down anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's over around the 10. It's almost like there's something magnetic over there that keeps uh, moving the stick. But it's 6-16 and counting in the third quarter. Red Rams in a big hole, not only in field position, but on the scoreboard, 17 to nothing for the Red Men. Bell keeping it himself. Flags fly. I got a sneaking suspicion. This one is against the face mask. Face mask. And well, that was on. there we go. We dig them out of the hole with another. Yeah. And that was on, uh, I believe that occurred right when Bell was being brought down there, Robert. So it, it's a, a big 15 tacked on to the, which was a sizable first down gain by Dylan Bell. That brings it way out of there. And uh, just with the doctor order for the Red Rams trailing by 17. And it looks like it'll be first down Rams at their own 34. And needing to move the ball in the worst of ways. With the wind on this third quarter. Quarter. Little bubble screen to Bell. Here's Dylan Bell. Bell takes it inside. A big move there by Dylan Bell. And Bell is across the 50 out to the Red Ram 51 yard line and a first down Red Rams. I think it was Benson here, 18. He missed that block on the tackler that got him. He just walked, went right by him. He's walking a little, Mr. Benson's walking a little gingerly as well. I'm sure, again, this at this the juncture in the football schedule, uh, a lot of guys are banged up. And, of course, a lot of these kids, uh, again, football numbers are declining. A lot of these kids getting going both ways as well. Oh, yeah, just contributes even greater that effect. First down for Bell in the ramp. Now it's not Bell, it's Todd Fawcett back there. Fawcett now. Chucks went over, I'm not sure what he was doing. He might have just been smartly throwing that one away. Didn't appear to be anything, but it's now Todd Fawcett. So the Rams are looking at any ways to kind of generate a little bit more offense here, now utilizing the athleticism of Bell. Yeah, putting Bell in as a receiver. With his quick feet, uh, yeah. just another yeah. Extra, yeah. extra dimension. I wonder if he's seen Todd Fawcett at half throwing the football. So here is Fawcett, back to pass, looking left, fires one, and that was a catchable ball for Benson, and I know Benson's upset about that. A nice thrown ball by Fawcett, and Benson unable to bring that in, but uh, Benson's having, I believe, some hand problems. And that occurred on that really funny play in the yep. first half on that kick that went off his uh, fingers and probably got his fingers jammed. He got his left, but he's left hand here. He's his, coming off in front of yeah. us, and he only his left hand he's yes. figuring that uh, looks like it's well, uh, limp. When he, went in there, when he went into that huddle, Robert, he looked like he yeah. was kind of handling it. And it's uh, he's certainly in, in some discomfort. That's not another not positive Maneuver for the Rams. Here's Boyce's kick. And that kick is right to Benson. Is right to Benson. Uh, they've got to leave Benson alone. He's already heard him once today. <laughs> just kidding. But, uh, Benson just can't seem to get away from that ball. And back goes Benson. Toughing it out here in uh, what, well, what's looking like the last football game of the year for the BCI Red Rams. So the Redmen are going to take over in great field position. That's nothing new here today, leading 17 to nothing. Redmen on their own 47 yard line. But up by 17, and the offense has only picked up three of those points. 
Here's Andrews, handoff inside, oh. snuffed out by Sheridan. Adam Sheridan on the big tackle of nice Ron play, Ryan Cargus. 59 couldn't, uh, couldn't contain him, and Sheridan just broke off that block. There's the, football. The, there's the replay and great effective tackling. Good job by Adam Sheridan. 333, 332 and counting here in the third quarter. It's been all Redmond. Andrews, the pitch to Benoit. Benoit trying to stringle it out right. Now takes it up the middle. And he was uh, gonna lose about five. Gets it back to the line of scrimmage, but a hold is gonna bring it back 10 more. It's it to be about second and 20, and we have another Red Ram down on the Redmond 55-yard line. So Sean Day, a pick six for the Redmond. Jager Pratt returning a Boyce punt for the other six. And then about a 15-yard chip field goal by Pratt is accounted for the 17 points by the Iron Pryor Redmen here today. So the Red Rams decline the penalty and force the Redmen into a third and long. It looks like about a third and seven and a half. They're gonna have to get the ball to the Red Ram 50 yard line. That's right. If they do, but I think Pratt will kick this away. And is Pettin back to receive? Rams send now their two others back. It's Bell and Benson. Bell and Benson and Pettin to receive this Pratt kick. a good kick and that's sending Bell oh. back. It takes a Redmond bounce all the way back now. Bell, oh, Bell picks it up and throws it out to Penham on outside and left. Can he break the one tackle? He does, he got one man to beat. And slows down and allows the Redmond to kind of haul it down, but a little razzle dazzle and desperation by the Red Rams. And that gets them out of a hole and brings the ball out to the Red Ram 44 yard line. Or will it be Fawcett or will it be Bell behind the helm of the Red Rams? Needless to say, they need some points quick. 2.45 to go in the third quarter, trailing by 17. Watching the Siasa. Double hey, A senior water, team from Commonwealth on TV Go. Your truly local television. Timeout by the Rams. That is one of the advantages of having your quarterback to return the kicks. A nice dart wow. from Bell to Petum. True. We just had the one. That's Petum had the one guy to beat out there. And they had three people back there, and you got to look and say, that's a little strange. I mean, what's why you got three, you know. You one being a quarterback. One being a quarterback, which he does run punts back too, though. Well, well he does, he, yeah. Normally, he, he, anyway, he does, but you got three guys but back But the Redmond there. wouldn't necessarily know that. And if you've seen, three, as you're just mentioning, three guys, one being the quarterback, something's got to you know, something, be Something's got to yeah. be up, so. Anyway, it was a nice run, and uh, and uh, to throw that ball across there and complete it, you know, under the rest, high school. Well, you look it's up, nice. look up, and you you know your your first thoughts. You're looking, you look like you're in the passing lane of the 401. They would be composed enough to throw across the field. Yeah, and it was perfect. So we'll ball. see where they can make of it here. And the other desperation here was uh, well, they got to move the, the ball. win. And um, with the win, 240 to go. They've only got 240 a win left in the third quarter. It's Fawcett rolling out to his right. Bell was open. Can't get open now. And Fawcett just has tried to give a little dunk pass to Irwin. 
it goes incomplete, but I think his fr first look was Bell. But again, the Redmen have been uh, great coverage all great afternoon, coverage. Robert. I mean, they, well, if they coast right, they know this is why they're doing it. You know, the Fawcett's in a quarterback, and Bell's your primary receiver. It's like the corny days, you know, yeah, like yeah. It, it's a double, two. double cover what, corny. What, what's the worst thing that can, you can do in football is be predictable. That's why we're here. We're unpredictable. Yeah. <laughs> unpredictable in Hooterville. Here we go. So second and ten, they're going to have to get the ball just inside the center field stripe. It was going to be a bubble screen. Now he sends it out. Ooh, and that whoa, could have been a whoa. pick six very easily. Had number whoa. 82 for the Redmond. Andrew Less thought about offense instead of defense. He did. That was intended for Sheridan, and uh, <laughs> that caught, caught him by surprise. Yeah, sometimes it's just uh, just too sweet a package yeah, to yeah, be like, believable. Wait, why me? <laughs> yeah, why me? <laughs> what did I do? Does it... So for the Red Rams, uh, again, you're going to have to kick this ball away, and less time to try and... Uh, eat away at this Redmond lead. Boyce, probably his best kick of the afternoon. It takes a Redmond bounce, however, it's picked up and it's gonna be probably no Another yards flag. on the BCI Redmond. Redmond are gonna start in good shape. This ball might come out to their own 50 yard line, leading it 17 to nothing. Seems like the last few series have all been around this that they started and uh, you know, they're just, they're using the clock to get the ball back. They're back on their own 50, 45, 50 yard line, and they just go in the three and out. They can run the clock and well, change, it, change ends here coming up shortly. And it's it's 17 to nothing for one very good reason. We mentioned coverage, and the coverage means coverage. great hey. defense all day long yeah. by the Redmond. BCR just unable to to get anything going on offense. Here's a handoff and oh, he's got a big hole and bowling his way inside That's Red our, Ram uh, territory number is 54 John, again. John Barron. And they seem to have a, a good low. running average this afternoon for him. Yeah, I mean a multitude of weapons for this Redmond they team. Do. Very, they very do. well they balanced. Do. They've had a lot of people with their hands on the ball. We haven't really seen Barron getting the ball till uh, you know the second half second here. Half. Well we got a And now 42, 41 seconds left in the third quarter. Flags fly. Barron now going off right tackle breaks so Breaks through a crowd and is close to a Redmond first down, but there is a flag on the play. No, the BCI. No, no, come back. Here Pro we go. Procedure on the. Against another big win. Yes. Run. Hmm. And another strong gust. Well, I've got my seat belt on here this afternoon. Well, you're not too far from it. The tables, the cameras, everything kind of with a little shake to them. Redmond now back at the Red Ram 53 yard line. They're going to have to get it to about the 36. Oh. Flags fly once again. And actually, the ball appeared to be loose, and Barron picked it up, but uh, no gain at all. Barring uh, with the, the flag here. It looked like BCI to me from here, and it is. So. Take that one and start over again. Seventeen seconds to go in quarter number three. Seventeen seconds, seventeen basically, nothing. Basically, yes, and that's a whole quarter of uh, lost time for the BCI Red Rams and any uh, response to this Redmond lead. Barron, the lone man in the backfield. 
for Andrews, and it is Barron going off left tackle, and Barron once again, oh, a great tackle by Dylan Bell. Dylan this Bell. Barron, that is indeed the last play of the third quarter here from Commonwealth Field, Iasa, double A senior football, and the Iron Prior District High School Redmen continue to lead the BCI Red Rams by a score of 17 to nothing. A pick six by Sean Day with seven. Another seven on the kickoff returned by Jager Pratt of the Redmen. And then a little chip shot by Pratt. A field goal of about 12, 13 yards as accounted for the Iron Prior Redmen points. BCI Red Rams basically unable all afternoon to uh, dent a hole on this oh. Redmond defense. And all day the first looks for quarterback Bell and now Fawcett have been covered. Oh, nice catch there by Prada. And now Prada, some extra yardage. Prada has got lots of real estate. Prada is going to the house. Prada is in for the touchdown. An exclamation point, 23 to nothing for the Redmond. Well, I'll take another look at this just to appreciate wow. Jagger Pratt, number 33 of the Iron Pryor Redmond. What a run. Starts out with a great one-handed catch. Because my possession, that was not a forward pass. So if he had not made that catch, it's a free ball. Well, there again, you know, there's the, the you know, br broken tackles ineffective tackling and Pratt uh, flags fly on the extra point. Dylan Bell right in the thick of things there, but. I think that's on BCI and they'll take that on the kickoff here. That's exactly what's going to transpire, Robert. But uh, first, nice touchdown. First play of the fourth quarter results in the Redmond adding to that lead, and now well, you can, uh, it's a resounding 24 to nothing lead by the Redmond of Armprior. Now, even though this one is. Uh, not close. The game that was close today earlier, Robert, Ooh. was a dandy St. Mary's Crusaders. Uh, Whoa. Man, pulling it out <laughs> in the final, the final drive, final seconds of the football game, pulling it out by a score of 16 to nine over the LaSalle Black Knights of Kingston, just after LaSalle had taken a nine and tied it up and taken a nine eight lead in the fourth quarter. But Steve White's St. Mary's Crusaders continue on to defending that provincial title. And again, that junior program at St. Mary's, the building of success continues. Once again, Brock Bonaria Sports Hall of Fame team of the year, and so rightly so, the St. Mary's Crusaders. So the Red Rams in a deep hole, that's oh. over Dylan Bell's head. That line drive is gonna go all the way into the Red Ram end zone. Bell is gonna try to run it out. And that's about job by Bell. Gets it out to maybe the five. So we had a thriller and we're having a not so thriller afternoon as total domination by a perennial double a superpower in the empire redmond well it's just a thrill to be here with you yeah i'm sure that's a is. thriller yeah i'm sure it is and this is uh, again as we knew when we come in here today regardless of a saint mary's or bci win or loss this was going to be the end of high school football for the 2011 calendar year in Brockville. Dude, it's been a very, very good one, yet the St. Mary's Crusaders continue on to defend that 
Provincial Championship. That's due to the three feet of snow we're expecting next week. Well, 19th of November, things can change pretty quick. We've sat outside in a, a number of Grey Cups in November and You know, with football too, you get into late November and December's and I guess we all get a little smarter as we get older being, no, not really, the, the living room is a far nicer place to watch this great game. Here is Bell, Bell's gonna go long and he's got a man wide open, it's Pila! Bell to Pila. Looks like a little face mask there coming down. And number uh, 21 of the Redmen hauling him down, Andrew McCauley. But not before a, a nice throw by Dylan Bell. Another nice throw. To Pila, we're taking another look at that. And Pila was just waiting for that one. Pila brings it in. And it's a first down Red Rams. Desperate times. Our hat here is Bell, keeps it. He's going to try and run up. He breaks a tackle. He picks up another 10. Bell scampering his way across his own 50-yard oh. line. And at the end of that play, flags fly everywhere. It'd be a late hit over there. Uh, well, they're both late, so they've got to be on the red menu, would think. Quite an athlete, that Mr. Bell. He sure is. Oh, somewhere Whoa. on the tail end of that, there was a hold, and that's all for nothing. Or no, it's a shove in the back, I guess, on the end of that play. Or was there two penalties, a hold and a shove in the back, Robert? No, no. Or can you, it, it, a lot of times it's hard two to, flags, read, but hard to read these guys. But needless to say, a, a nice play by Bell is out the window, and it's going to be like second and 20 for the Red Rams here in the fourth quarter, trailing by 24. 24 nothing for the Arm Prior Redmen over the BCI Red Rams. And the pitch is to Adam Sheridan. Adam Sheridan is going to try and break containment, get around the edge, but he's unable to do so. Well strung out by the left side of that Redmond defense. Nothing there, you're right. It just, just too long to get across field, Robert. Yeah. Eight fifty four and counting here in the fourth quarter. These red men have got a, uh, they got a big bench, so they may not be as tired. Bell dropped back in the pocket. Now Bell's in some trouble. He's surrounded, but look at that uh, athleticism, and he scampers up and picks up 10 yards out of nothing. It's going to bring up about a third and 11 for the Red Rams. And with no, they're certainly in three down territory. See, there's that coverage again. You know, he's just scrambling in every play. And, uh, you know, it's not that he's a rookie quarterback. He just can't see anything. No. Um, he hasn't got any time. Well, first, second looks are not there. There's nope, coverage nope. of been all day. Pete Atkinson and the Red Rams coming in this game have, 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 were thinking about a kind of a short, intermediate passing game, a safe percentage thing. That's what Bell's been looking for today. But it just hasn't been there. Credit to the Redmond defense. Now a little reverse and go. fumbling the football. It looks like turnover to me from here. Sure is. Sure Redmond is. will take over. And Benson losing the handle, but Benson is basically down to one wing. Well, it's kind of all unraveling, but uh, it unraveled early here this afternoon at Commonwealth. There are the Red Rams are just in against a, a, a much better football oh, team. Oh, superior short, team, both, so just on short, both sides short, of the ball. Both sides of the ball, short and sweet of things. They got a very well balanced tack. Good play calling, uh, well balanced, yeah. 
Back to throw. Oh, a nice tackle there by number 53 for the Red Rams on Andrews. And that was T.J. Barrett really wrapping up Andrews there. Oh, T.J. fella again and he's still going nope. and there's no point in trying to tackle number 54 around the midsection and what took nope. him he had to trip him up that was a way to bring him down had no flag on his run <laughs> well, he's, he's had a couple long ones and they've called back and but he's uh like you said i don't think he ran a, one carry in the first half, and he comes out here like uh, so nowhere. Where'd you find him in, in the second, dressing no. room at the halftime well, or I something? Mean, you know, the guy that started the football game was number 33, Pratt. And he kicked, he returned a kickoff for a touchdown, and there also we go. went in again, and here goes 54. None other than John Barron. The Barron has landed and has moved the football deep into Red Ram territory and the Redmen are just about to put the exclamation point <laughs> in the nail through the coffin as if there isn't a few of them there already. Could that be the Red Baron? Could be the Red Baron, it's the Red Men. You're, you're, you're full of it today, Robert. So it's first down Redmen knocking at the door here in the red zone. And it's right up the gut once again. That line just pushing forward there. Well, there is a, you know, mentioned before, a mismatch in there. In size 506, approaching the five minute mark in this football game. Trying to roll it up, breaks a tackle, breaks another one, oh, but a great nice. tackle and firing him down. Andrews there, I believe it was Adam Sheridan again. Sheridan again, yes. See, they faked that play on the last play and uh, then they went to it this one. That was a, uh, about a three, four yard loss. Well, third down, Neil, and they're going for it. It's Barron. Barron, uh, good job there by the right side of the Red Ram defensive line. Well, we'll take it over. Turn things over on downs, and uh, good for the Red Ram not to quit here and give up the ghost. They're still fighting away right to the final moments. Yeah, I agree with you. They're just, uh, they're fighting because they enjoy the game. You know, it's. Uh, well, some of these guys, it's the, the final. Could be their last, their, <laughs> could be the last or off for some of them. And uh, it's a, it is a tough thing, whether it's junior football, junior hockey, you take it for granted, minor all the way up. And uh, it's kind of, you know, reminiscent of a death in a lot of ways. It's permanent, like it, it's hard to, uh, you know, all of a sudden for the first time, you're not going to school in the fall or, you know, you can't play junior hockey, you can't play junior football anymore, and it's permanent. So one thing's talking about it, but you find out uh, how really precious and valuable those moments and memories are. Down to, we're approaching the three minute mark in this IASA double-A match, 24 to nothing for the Armfire Redmen. 
they've certainly put together this perennial superpower, another strong provincial contender. Bell, a handoff, and it's, I believe it's to pet him, pet him ahead for a few. Third down. It's a third down gamble, third and about three for the Red Rams, and it's no gamble at all because Boyce is just going to kick this one up in the wind. It comes down in the hands of number 21, Andrew McCauley. McCauley's going to take it out left. He's got a big seam over there. He's taking it way down deep and out of bounds at about the wow. Red Ram 10 yard line. A nice return by number 21, Andrew McCauley. That was a great return. Just circled the wagons on there, and uh, again another weapon. Like he just ran like a gazelle. Once yes. he got a yeah, he was a smooth there, runner. Another really, really smooth runner. There's a lot of weapons on that Redman team. Two fifteen to go in the football game. Redman knocking at the door in the BCI red zone once again. can't think there's anything left in that Red Ram defensive tank. They held the Redman last time. Now it's a handoff to number 19. He's close to the goal line. Ryan Cargis for the Redman. Rams have got to be worn out. They're just getting mowed down there. And uh, substitution, guys are down, this and that, and guys playing both ways. Yeah, it's just a continuous wave and wave and wave by the Redmond. Credit the Rams for not giving up. Still battling right to the, the end. Now, finally, it, it's, as you say, Robert, the Red Baron. The Red Baron it. flies in again. And taking it into the house, it's now 30 to nothing yeah. for the Redmen. Yeah, they're looking good. They just look confident, smooth, you know, well, every part of the game, you know, the special yeah, teams and... Uh, you could see this team. It's going to take an awful good team to knock these guys off, Robert. This is a, this is a really good football team. And good football program. On for the extra point, and it's good. 155 to go in this the Asa AA playoff game from Commonwealth Field. The final football game of the year in Brockville, and it's the visiting Armprior District High School Redman. 31, the BCI Red Rams no score. And a much better team is moving on. A credit to the Red Rams, a good solid season. Pete Atkinson, Tom Bell and staff. And again, Red Rams, uh, they had to come up with a victory in Cornwall against Holy, Cr Holy Trinity Falcons last weekend well, to bring a playoff game back here to Brockville. Well, and as a result for Brockville football fans, they've had a treat here this afternoon a double header of double A senior and junior A playoff football game. Uh, probably is one of the later dates in time on the 19th of November. Well, I think back and we had the privilege of being here in uh, October 8th for the Brockville Bowl. October 8th for the Brockville Bowl when they beat Tess. And, uh, you know, so these kids have got to look at their year and say, you know, we've had success and everything, and we just got whipped by a, uh, a better team. And um, uh, 
That's Benson and Padham. It's Padham now and Padham is going to be taken out of bounds at about the Red Ram 34 yard line. And normally, you know, it ends up you're, you're in against some pretty formidable opponents at this time of year. And little things are determined things, but there's quite a difference in uh, these two football teams. I can remember my senior year in high school, we were championship in Saucer going to Niagara Falls to play them, and we thought we were good. And we'd come up to the whole year and everything, and now that we go down there, and I think we lost 37 to 3 or something wow. to Niagara Falls in the championship in Niagara Falls. And we did, couldn't believe what happened. Well, we didn't do anything, they were just that good. <laughs> and there's a reason why, the same as the Red Rams in your situation and the Red Rams situation. You're just, it's a mismatch. Pete Atkinson said we were in the underdogs coming into this. He had a game plan, but uh, they couldn't hold them. The, I guess the key to here today was, you know, the pick six started things rolling for the Redmen, then a punt return punt by Jerry Plott before the offense had even scored. So BCI right off the bat were down 14 by this road team without the offense scoring any points. 17 nothing at the, at the half. And of course, they nothing in the third quarter. And no scoring no. in the third quarter. No. That was BCI's disadvantage because it took that time right off the clock the whole third With quarter. the win. With the win as well. And now two more touchdowns to solve it away for the Red Men here. Red, Red Men here in the fourth quarter down to 144 to go in the football game. And again, we got to thank the whole TV Kojiko crew. Uh, you know, Sean uh, coming down here today and, uh, and others to assist. We even got some camera people from Pembroke. And, uh, you know, Matt and Steve, the whole TV Kojiko crew, uh, a great job of yeah. uh, bringing the community of Brockville some very, very good football. Yeah, Fabulous. We're, we're certainly Fabulous. beneficiaries, Robert, yourself and I have uh, a lot of great work and uh, sure. and they, they feed us as well. You know, oh, another. thank you to Metro for uh, supplying all the... So anybody that's, <laughs> anybody that's starving there today, that anybody, uh, this is a place to get a job, <laughs> you're going to be well fed and well looked after. It's been a divine pleasure. Yeah, to be all is, part, be all part of this this season, and it uh, is a privilege. To, it's a privilege to do this, and, and we certainly thank yeah. each and every one of them. And it's hard to get into the name game because you're always going to miss out on a few. Boyce kicking this one up, oh. and losing the handle there. We got another newcomer out there for the Red Rams, number 36, Mitch Bott. And I promised Matt that I wouldn't ask for a salary increase next year. Well, there's a good chance you'll be getting about the same that you got this year. Well, ABC Sports is looking pretty good now. Monday signing day. <laughs> so you're going to take it see, uh, basically in-house from this point <laughs> forward. And you, of course, you're... Uh, being an old Nebraska Cornhusker, oh. even though you're a Canadian boy, you're looking forward to uh, next week and when she all gets rolling the, the U.S. Thanksgiving. Big weekend. Here start, we go. Start the holiday season in the United States. Here it is. Hand off. To number six knocked down oh. there is Chris Benoit, the ball carrier. Adam Sheridan once again right in there on the tackle for the Rams. We're under a minute to go in the football game. 31 to nothing for the Iron Prior Redman. And I believe the St. Mary's Crusaders, they continue their run by virtue of that thrilling, thriller. last minute 16 to 9 victory today. They will play next weekend, and I believe it's Beckwith there between Smith Falls on a turf, uh, turf field between Smith Falls and Carlton Place, if I'm not mistaken. Here's the Red Baron again, as you so well coined, Robert. Picks up only a couple that time, but uh, it uh, inflicts a lick just the same. And this could be the last play of the football game. 15 seconds to go. 
Isn't that what we said in the junior game? <laughs> what was and they're still gonna go going for it, oh. and it's incomplete, and that is That's it, folks. the football game. So for uh, for Robert Palmer and myself, Neil McHugh, and the whole TV Kojiko staff, uh, we bid you good afternoon well, from Commonwealth that. Field. The Arm Fryer Redmen justifiably moving on. They defeat the Red Rams 31 to nothing. Good afternoon, Hooterville. Thank you, Neil.